Hi, I'm Marin and I will be talking about temporal point processes, their motivation, theory and applications. This will be mostly based on the paper Intensity-Free Learning of Temporal Point Processes, a joint work with Alexander Schur and Stefan Gunemann. The data we are dealing with is events happening at irregular times. For example, in a social network, one message can represent one event that happens at a specific time point. Different people will message others at different times, some messages triggering further replies. This behavior gets very complex. We want to investigate the events on the timeline drawn in red and try to find some patterns. Another example are visits to hospital. We can also look into purchases people made. The list goes on. So what can we do when we get such data? We can try to predict the future given what we have observed so far. One way to do this is by predicting the next event and then expanding history to include the prediction. Then we repeat the procedure. That means we can predict events one by one. The question is how to model the future. This is where point processes jump in. Point process defines how many points we expect to see on some interval. The measure that defines this is called intensity. In this example we have intensity lambda on blue interval so that we expect to see 5 points here. A single realization of the process are random points on this interval. They will always take different positions and sometimes we will get more points, sometimes less. We can divide this interval into two subsets with different expected number of points. We can continue to divide this until in the limit we get an intensity as a function of position. Now the expected number of points on this interval is equal to the area under the intensity curve. How can we use all of this to predict the next point? Well, given a history of points we can define where we expect to see new points in the future with an intensity function. We can even learn this function from data. If we know where the next point landed, the likelihood can be calculated with this formula. It depends on the intensity in this point and the area under the curve. We want to maximize this probability. However, the interval is hard to calculate. That's why existing approaches either pick a very simple intensity function to get a nice integral or estimate it with Monte Carlo sampling, which is costly calculation. We can ask here why not just define directly the probability density function instead. As it turns out we can do this and there exists a simple way to go from density to intensity and back. By doing this we suddenly have nice likelihood, easy sampling and can borrow methods from density estimation to build powerful models. To model density we have two straightforward choices, having a mixture of some simple distributions or using normalizing flows to transform a simple distribution to a complex one. In the end, our approach processes history with a recurrent neural network and defines a density function for the time until the next event. This works great in the practice and can capture very complex behaviors. Finally, we can take this idea and go beyond temporal point processes. This can also be used to model spatial data. For example, locations of trees or spread of a disease. Or we can go to 3D point clouds, but also any other set like data. If you want to learn more, take a look at our paper and code. Thanks for watching.